The announcement that President Keir had dismissed his deputy, along with the entire cabinet, came as a surprise. It has taken less than two weeks for South Sudan to plunge to the brink of civil war. Hundreds have already died. Tens of thousands of people have fled their homes because of the fighting between factions loyal to two rival politicians. Despite diplomatic and UN peacekeeping efforts to end it, there's no sign it will stop anytime soon. And officials are struggling to provide food, shelter and medical care to those who need it. There wasn't 200 or 300 people at this gate. There was thousands of people screaming and hollering, running, tramping over each other to get into this gate. My name is Marial Simon Shor. I came from Juba. I'm 17 years old, and I'm so Sudanese. This boy was in shock. He had trauma going on within him that we can't even account for. That night was very bad in South Sudan because I was trying to, to go back to school, but the problem of uh, that violence caused me to be in dilemma. We were living in our house. My uncle and I, at 10 p.m., then we had the shooting of guns. My right-hand man that's in our ministry, Rafael Pedro, everyone calls him Dito, he, he called me and he said, Sam, have you seen the story in Newsweek? The article in Newsweek about this young boy is just amazing article. We need to rescue this boy. We need to go get him. We need to get him out of this camp now. When we went back. The last words that he said to me was, he said, please don't leave me here tonight. I can't stay here tonight. Yes, I was there because I'm the one opening the, the door, the house door, I opened, and then they called us. They told me, sit down. Then I sit down. When my uncle come out and follow me, then they catch him and they told him you can go to the car. Then he refused and then they kill him. Then I run with the left side. Where the people are running and people are falling and people are dying before your eyes. That's what was going through his head. You know, we watch a movie and some people say, oh, I can't stand to watch it. I had to close my eyes in that part. See, Simon couldn't close his eyes because he was running for his life. Even on the road, there was dead people on the road. Then I see the signboard written Unimis. I find a place for myself, then I sit. Yeah, then I spend four days without food. So they knew they had a little over 22,000 people in this camp. And this camp wasn't much bigger, if it was, much bigger than a football field. People are not cleaning, cleaning up the toilet because no water. There's no enough water for 22,000 people. He never had security at night. The rebels came, shook him, woke him up at night and tried to recruit him into the army, even gave him threats that he must join this rebellion. They were trying to force me because they said this is our rebel. Mashar is our rebel, we can support him. You know now we, you are 17 years old, we are looking for 17 years old, 15 and even 14 up to 30. Because those who are 30, 35 years, they don't, they don't run faster. You 17 years, you, we will teach you how to shoot guns. And also we can pay you if you accept to be a soldier. He wanted out, and the first, the first day that we met him, uh, we left him there that night, and he even said to me that night, he said, I'm ready to go now. I met with Sam in the evenings in the camp. Then he called me, 
and he told me tomorrow we can go to, to Uganda. And then I was feeling happy about that. My first time I, you know, I wonder how, how these people and where are they going to take me. It is not me who will take care of my life, it is God. God is there to take care of my life. Even if these people, they will go and throw me in the sea, let them take me, no problem. I don't care because the situation in the camp is not okay. That journey was very nice because when we reach Numele, I see many children, many orphans like me. I was happy because I know God did not do this thing to me alone. He did to all people in the world. We have a full-time doctor, Sudanese doctor, that works on our compound. We have a clinic there. The first thing we did was took him straight to the doctor and let the doctor begin to examine him. That's when the doctor discovered that the rash on his body was not just a little rash, it was all over the entire body and it was for bathing in the bad water, infested water, for five weeks. And then he had a bad stomach problem. From their life go on very well. And he said, can I help? Can I help? And I mean, he got in the mud hole with all of us boys. He got in there and was digging, was laughing. I mean, it's the first time that I seen him that he definitely, definitely there was hope for him because there was a smile on him. He was reacting. You know, we got in there, we were kind of splashing each other, throwing mud on each other. And Simon begun to do the same thing. You know, so then I knew, hey, there's definitely, there's definitely hope to recover for this boy. I think that one is a, is a God. God is the one who sends some. Because I keep on praying, asking God that, God, you can send me away from this camp because my uncle was killed. Now I will not have to go to school. God, you can open a way for me. I usually pray day and night to ask God. I can say it is God because I keep on praying. It is God who sent some to come and take me from camp. Yeah, even now I'm still thanking God because he opened this way for me. I'm really excited what God has done to me. Yes, really. When I will go back, I will help other people like the way Sam helped me. I'm really happy. I can also follow the food step, how Sam is doing to, to me pre, because it's not payment. But now also I will do the same thing to some people, because life is better than money. <laughs>